Greetings, and welcome to Freedom Quest. We recently did a video, exposing the errors of cessationism. But some folks thought that the video was not in-depth enough. Please keep in mind, our videos are not hour-long documentaries. And there's so much deception, but so little time. So today we're going to take a little deeper dive, on the topic of doctrinal deception. Specifically on the topic of cessationism. And we will attempt to expose not only their error, but also their tactics. So fasten your seat belts, this won't be for the faint of heart, especially if you are a Calvinist. So the first step is to pick our victim, or actually, our perpetrator. And when it comes to Calvinism and cessationism, there are so many false teachers to choose from. But currently, they all seem to emanate from one center location of deception, G3 Ministries. The devil has used G3 to lead thousands into the tangled web of cessationism. So that seems like a good place to start. G3 is made up of mostly Calvinists, but they also all seem to be cessationists. That's their main topic of discussion, and that's also their greatest error. Can you imagine, having the focal point of your ministry, being blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? That just blows my mind. Of all the things that they could teach, they choose to concentrate on, and violate, the one and only unforgivable sin. Fascinating. They couldn't just stop with the heresy of Calvinism, they just had to press through, and blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That's like eating rotten putrid food, out of a dumpster. But that one leftover spoiled hamburger was not enough, so you decided to eat every piece of garbage in the container. That's suicide my friend. Doctrinal suicide. So for the sake of time, I think we'll just pick two of their top deceivers. Uncle Tom Pennington, and televangelist, Todd Friel. They are both Calvinists and cessationists, as well as gifted scripture twisters. So let's start with Uncle Tom. I skimmed over this clip a few days ago in another video, but today we're going to take a closer look, at his theological error, as well as his actual tactics. Keep in mind, their number one issue, is that they have no biblical basis for their blasphemous doctrine of cessationism. That's the elephant in the sanctuary. No scripture, to back of their heretical doctrine. None. Nada. Zilch. So they are left with only one option, make it up, and look like you know what you're talking about. That's right my friend, they are used car salesmen. And have they got a good deal for you today. It's a beautiful little gem, with only 20 miles on it. It used to belong to my grandmother, and she only drove it to the store and church, once. And this little baby can be yours for a mere $20,000. It's a steal. Actually, that so-called car, is a piece of junk. Just like the false doctrine of cessationism. So let's take a brief look, at what the cessationists are trying to sell you, and their tactics of treacherous doctrinal trickery. Let's listen in to Uncle Tom Pennington, as he spins his web of deception. He was asked why is it, that cessationists don't have any scriptures, to back up their false doctrine. And this, was his response. And you know, that's a, that's a valid question, sure. but one that's easily answered. Okay, so right out of the gate we have tactic number one. Boisterously pretending that they have an answer. No scripture? No problem. Oh yeah, you mean the elephant in the room. You mean the fact that we have no scripture to back up our heresy of cessationism? No big deal whatsoever. So tactic number one, is pretending that having no scriptural basis for your doctrine, is no big deal. So let's continue. Uh, first of all, that question cuts both ways, right? right? I mean, there's no verse that says they'll continue either. So that's tactic number two. Blatant bald face lies. The scriptures are replete with verses that teach that the gifts of the Holy Spirit would be with the church forever. A good example would be 1 Corinthians 13 12. Contrary to cessationist propaganda, that verse actually clearly teaches continuationism. Verse 12 literally tells us when the gifts of the Spirit will cease. At the end of the church age, when Jesus returns, and we see him, face to face. Let's continue. We understand as believers, and all serious Bible students through the history of the church have understood, that you don't have to have a clear verse to have a clear doctrine. Right. Wow, this dude is on a roll. They're coming so fast I can't keep up. In that short clip, we see three different tactics. 
Number 1. Insinuating that all serious students of the Bible, agree with you. I'm sorry Uncle Tom, no they don't. All serious Bible students, don't agree on much of anything, especially cessationism. But then tactic number 2, he hits you in the face, with a sledgehammer. What are all quote unquote, serious Bible students in agreement with? That you don't need scripture, to back up your false doctrine. Are you kidding me? You sound like a Mormon, or a Jehovah's Witness. Since when do we not need scripture, to back up our theology? Since never. But then he makes a false distinction. He uses the word, clear. We don't need clear scripture, to have clear doctrine. Somehow adding the word clear, makes the blasphemy easier to swallow. And then the third tactic in this clip, is to have Virgil agree with him. As if Virgil is qualified to confer his statement as being valid. So let's continue. And the most obvious example of that is the Trinity. Yes. One of the cardinal doctrines of the Christian faith. And there is no verse anywhere that says that we worship one God in three persons. Mm -hmm. And yet that is the clear teaching of Scripture when you put it together. Right. When, when you look at the analogy of Scripture, when you allow Scripture to interpret Scripture, then that's where you land. The same thing is true with this. Okay, that's another bald-faced lie. You have the audacity to compare the Trinity to cessationism? So you tear down the Trinity to lift up your false doctrine? That's rich bro. Too rich for my blood. That's not just heresy, that's downright demonic poison. That's twisting the scriptures into a pretzel. The Bible clearly teaches that there is only one God. Then it clearly reveals that one God in three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But that is not the case with your false doctrine of cessationism. Nowhere does the scripture teach that the gifts would cease before the return of Christ. Nowhere. So on one side, we have the scriptures. On the other, we have your traditions. I'm sorry my friend but I'm going to have to go with the scriptures on this one, every time. So let's continue. So I think I understand where that's coming from. It's like, show me the evidence. Right. And my response is, the evidence isn't in a verse. The evidence is all of scripture looked at as, as a whole. Yeah. But you're looking at individual text in that process of building the argument, just as you do with the Trinity. So we don't have any verses to back up our false doctrine. But lucky for you, if you take this verse out of context, and that verse out of context, then rob Peter to pay Paul, voila, you have cessationism. And oh by the way, cessationism is just as orthodox as the Trinity. And while we're at it, I have this beautiful little car to sell you too. No thanks Tom, I think I'll look elsewhere. For my car, and my doctrine. But don't get me wrong, Uncle Tom is not the only deceiver at G3 Ministries. Remember, they're all Calvinists, and cessationists. So false doctrine, is in their DNA. So in closing, let's take a brief look at another of their scripture twisters. Televangelist, Todd Friel. The toad, as he is known in non-Calvinist circles, can twist the scriptures with the best of them. He's not a real theologian, but he plays one on TV. Here he is, spouting the Calvinistic party line, the heresy of twice-dead cessationism. Recently, Jordan Standridge of The Cripplegate wrote three reasons that God is a cessationist, meaning when he finished inspiring a Revelation 22, he put an exclamation point on it and said, don't let anybody add to this revelation. This is it. It's all done. Everything that you need for life and godliness is in this book. So Mr. Toad here committed three common cessationist tactics. Number one, he quotes an expert. Hey, don't believe me. I'm just a stupid televangelist. But this author here, he's a real expert, and he said in his book, Yoda, Yoda, Yoda. Most of the time, they're quoting some ancient reformer from the 15 or 1600s. Most often, it's John Calvin himself. But that's a super common tactic that Calvinists use incessantly. Hey, if you won't believe me, let's see what the experts say. Not let's see what the Bible says, no, let's get our false doctrine from some other professional Calvinist bonehead. Whatever. But then he commits his second deceptive tactic. Take scripture, out of context. 
In his effort to convince his gullible audience that cessationism is true, he quotes Revelation chapter 22, out of context. Revelation chapter 22 says quote, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. Unquote. Sounds legit, right? The only problem is that Toad is insinuating that that verse backs up cessationism. The implication is, if you ever hear from God, you are adding to the scriptures and violating the warning of Revelation 22. So there are many errors within that assumption. Just because the book of the Revelation is the last book in the Bible, does not mean that it was the last book written. But the bigger issue is that the warning, to not add to, or subtract from, was only in reference to the book of the Revelation itself. Then Todd takes a big step back, and shoots himself in the foot. He commits his third erroneous tactic. He quotes 2 Peter 1.3, out of context. He infers that that scripture, backs up cessationism, when in reality, it contradicts cessationism. He infers that the scriptures, are all we need for life, and godliness. In reality, in context, that verse actually says quote, As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Unquote. Nowhere does that verse refer to the Bible. It says that through God's divine power, we are given all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through God's divine power, not his divine scriptures, and his divine power is the Holy Spirit. So that verse is not about the scriptures, it's about the divine power of the Holy Spirit. But to add insult to injury, 2 Peter 1.3, as well as the rest of 2 Peter, was actually written after the book of the Revelation, which would contradict his first statement about adding to the scriptures. But that's my point. The Calvinists and cessationists will do anything to promote their false doctrine. Including, but not limited to, verses out of context, misleading statements, as well as plain old bald-faced lies. My advice my friend would be to avoid the false doctrine of Calvinism, and cessationism, like the plague. Virtually every New Testament author warned about false teachers infiltrating the church. Actually the Apostle Peter himself said, in 2 Peter chapter 2, quote, but there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. These people are springs without water, and mists driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them. For they mouth empty boastful words and, by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, while they themselves, are slaves of depravity. Unquote. Those are words of wisdom my friend. Words to live by. Words, worth dying for.